Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. I've got some new awesome sauce to show you today. I picked up a new knife and actually it was kind of like a whim. I was looking for something new to review. I didn't even know this knife existed uh, until a friend sent me a pic of the one that he got. And I'm like, hmm, that's different. Took a look at it, rolled the dice. I'm like, what the hell? However, I was actually very surprised at how much I instantly liked this knife. And that knife is the Benchmade Claymore. It's an auto. So we're going to take a look at this knife and also use this opportunity to kind of go through quickly, uh, recap the autos that I still own, and give you my thoughts on them on how they've held up because there's you know some variances there. So if you want to know more and you want to find out about this one, don't go away. So we're going to save this bad boy for last, but I'll put a uh, timestamp for where it's at if you want to skip ahead to this in the video. But I wanted to use this opportunity to kind of do a follow-up on my different autos that I do have, the ones that I still have, and go over how well they've held up. Uh, it's a bigger deal for me now because, yay, we're, we're legally able to carry them in Ohio now. So, yay for me. You just can't stab anybody with it. It's like, if you stab somebody with it, that's bad. And it's like, that isn't that how it's always been? So, hmm. Oh, well. So, in no particular order, let's just grab one. Some of these I don't know. I've got a couple Ultratechs. I don't know which one is which until I open it up. So, Ultratech. I've always said that... Um, for out the front, these are like one of the ones that most people want to start with. It's one of my favorites. Which one is this? Ooh, it's my first one. My first Ultra Tech. So this one is an LMAX one, I think. Yes. And it's held up pretty good. Now, feedback on this one. This is one that over time has gotten pretty sticky. At one point it lost, you know, you know don't hate this is just my experience so I'm just, any microtech fans that want to like correct me on proper whatever this is just my experience you know over time uh, this starts losing its snap and I've watched all the videos and this is like spray rem oil in it blow it out you know that kind of helped and then it didn't really help so this one's got a little bit more kick to it but it's definitely better than it was what I did differently, all on my own, just don't take this with a grain of salt, but I'm like, there's got to be something to clean it out. And I was working on something else, and it's like, hmm, I, I used a can of uh, brake parts cleaner. Sprayed it out, rinsed it out, blew it out with an air can, and then reapplied the oil, and it was much, much better. Because it's like, you can't just keep adding oil and blowing it out. It's like somehow we got to clean it out and it worked it worked so that's just me you know take it if I have one complaint about Microtex it's that over time you know the screws can come loose and they have literally invented like the screw that you cannot <laughs> you absolutely can't do anything with unless you have the bit that that does it you can't use needle nose pliers it's like, come on, you know it's going to happen. It's like, why can't we just have the freaking torque screws or the wrench or whatever? So I hope to get my hands on one of those at some point instead of having to drive all the way across town to the knife store. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's something that has a lot of moving parts, so that is to be expected. You just need to take care of it. So yeah, that's definitely actually starting to feel a lot better since I did that. But it's still got the strongest push button of the ultra techs so the other one let's see which one we seem to be missing an ultra tech no we got them all uh this one 
This one's been pretty consistent with the action. Um, I don't, not as big a fan of this one. I know, I understand, these are, these are daggers. You're supposed to stab people with it or whatever. Stab mailboxes. But I like to use my stuff. I am not a uh, microtech museum type of person. So I didn't feel like it had a good cutting edge. Working on that edge kind of took it down a little bit. I don't care because it's a user. I don't like safe queens because safe queens aren't fun. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it still does the trick. If I mean, this probably sharpening. I didn't do all that. Somebody kind of over sharpened it. I actually took it somewhere to get it sharpened because I didn't want to take too much off and they went and did it for me anyway so such is life but yeah this one it's kinda like eh, not that attached to it this one is my top dog my absolute favorite my most reliable the best action I did clean it out once re-oil it it's not too it's not too light on the button it's not too heavy on the button it's my favorite shape it's my favorite one so there's that Ultra Tech. I have one more. But th this one, the original one, it, it did give me problems for a while. But yeah, I did, I did figure that out. If, if there's anything that's kind of like a, more of like a safe, it's not a safe queen, but I mean, what? it's just for fun. I mean, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> there's no utilitarian purpose for this Ultra Tech. I just thought it looked cool and I wanted a new one. But... This one, action's been perfect on it. No problems. Thing is, pretty much all these run around 280, 290. Close, this one might have been closer to 3. So that's not for everybody. The only other one I have in this, the, the complaints I have about this, I have to, I have to be careful here and, and state that I am not the first owner of this. I'm the third or the fourth, and I don't know how much use and abuse this had before, but I got in trade, and this was uh, five, I think, Halo five. So I always wanted a Halo. You know, ever since Twenty Four Season One. So this is the single action, but I don't do anything with it because. I, it could have just been it's had a lot of use in the years before it reached me but sometimes it locks and other times maybe it could be the angle or whatnot now well, now it's gonna do it every time and of course it's on camera but it doesn't always you know lock in the open position it like bounces and I find that very annoying it does it has been over sharpened a little bit that kind of hurts my OCD especially toward the front but again this was a trade I did nowhere near pay full price for it I wanted something to play with yeah, but I don't know how to really get that thing tightened up to where it locks every time short of sending it into Microtech and you pretty much have to use there's no pocket clip with these that's why I'm kind of interested in that Heretic one the smaller single action because it actually has a, a pocket clip but it's still a cool one I just wish the freaking thing would lock open every single time not just when I have the camera running so that's what's happened with those over here the one that, that I have the next oh wait whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we have one more this one is the one that's different way different so that's my Microtech SOCOM and this thing is a beast. This thing is held up perfect. I re this is a keeper. Definitely a keeper. But there, there is one thing I don't like so much about this one. But we will come back to that. Because it's going to come into play once we get to the, the new knife. The only other ones I got. Now there are some other ones that I've shown over time. And it doesn't, because I don't have them, doesn't mean I don't still like them, but they might have been like some of the smaller Kershaws that I'd given away as a gift to somebody or whatnot. But this is just what I still have. So we've got this one. Which number is this? Ah, 
I don't know. I don't know which number this is. It was 12. I mean, I'm just throwing, guessing at this point. But this one is the smaller version of this one. These two I really like. These two are phenomenal. And they're, you know, affordable. I don't remember the exact prices. Um, they're around 100 bucks, a little over range, possibly. And then there's also like a California legal one of this. It's got an even shorter blade, but, you know, I don't live in California stands, so I'm not going to worry about that. These have held up really great. They're not like super strong on the kick like some of these other ones, but they're strong enough for the weight of the blade. So those are some of my favorite Kershaw launches. This one I still like a lot too, but I don't use it that much for some reason. I don't know. I just I guess I just like the other stuff better. But it definitely looks cool. It's got good function. I like the button. It's worn cliff. But I just don't actually I, I like it. I like it enough to keep it. I don't like it enough that I carry it a lot. The one I like the least, the one I was most disappointed with, and this is from the earlier ones. So this is the launch something or other. What is it? Seven, eight, nine. Why don't you put them on the freaking blade? It's not to look them up. But this one, it's got a nice shape. It's a nice size, but the with the, this type of you know plunge button opening in the spring, it does not always. It's, it's not like see there it did. It's not super strong. It doesn't always lock open 100% of the time, which pretty much means this thing gets regulated to the drawer. And this doesn't have like an extreme amount of use on it either. But some of these, when you've got the bigger blades, I mean, you got to really throw some extra spring in it to make sure that thing works 100% of the time. And the spring in this one just isn't that strong. Most of the other launches, I really like um, I just don't have them so there is kind of like a quick recap the good and the bad what's held up what hasn't of the autos that I've had so far now let's talk about this all right so this is pretty new this is the Benchmade Claymore and I wasn't sure when my friend sent me the picture because I do not usually usually go for combo edge blades in some cases yeah okay but usually not but that's all they had I didn't see any kind of like plain edge version but something told me to go ahead and take a chance on it I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about it once I got this out of the box and got a got a sense of the, the size the weight, the handle shape, the action, the lock. I instantly liked it. This handle is fantastic. I love this handle. This handle fits my hand perfectly. Whether I've got my finger up here or a full grip, it just feels good. It feels solid. And even though this does not have steel liners in it it doesn't feel like as flimsy as like you know the griptilians did something about that just I don't know I couldn't I could never get past it this one doesn't feel like that but it's got a really good grip it's got a really good shape it's got Morse code on it which I looked it up and it was like FTG I have no idea what that means um, F the gremlins I don't know it's a mystery, but uh, the the steel push button plunge lock is real nice. It's got a good feel to it. This the action on this is very good, very springy. It, I would say it's very close to the SOCOM in feel as far as how how good it snaps. Now one thing I really like about this, and this is where I'm going to come back to that SOCOM. Because, I mean, SOCOM definitely feels like a more substantial, I mean, we've got a lot of aluminum going on there. But, when it comes to these side openers, 
when it comes to the SOCOM, one thing I, c I mean, it's definitely not a deal breaker. It's definitely not a deal breaker. And I, I might have got the manual one if um, if they would have been available, but they weren't. But it's about the way I have to hold it in my hand to get to the button so that my fingers are out of the way. It's like something, it's like I don't get like a real, I feel like I, I'm almost like putting it into a more unsecure grip in order to activate it. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna do that. But, and, and the whole reason for that is the pocket clip because when I'm using this and the pocket clip is down here my fingers are hitting that pocket clip and when I'm activating the button the knife just feels much more secure in my hand when I'm getting it into an opening position because my fingers are hitting that pocket clip and I don't have that with this even though this is a freaking badass knife do not get me wrong like under it's like I just wish the pocket clip would have been down here it would have for me at least it would have gave it a little bit more of like a secure feel when I'm actually hitting that button so that's another thing that I like that I really like about this it's not too heavy it's not too light now the steel is CPM D2 that means it's crucible D2 everyone's got you know I have to deal with it every time you bring up D2 some people love D2 some people hate D2 it really depends on what kind of D2 it is, where it was sourced from, who's grinding it, who's heat treating it. Uh, this is Crucible D2. So it is really good. And I will say that this thing might have been the sharpest bench made that I've ever gotten out of the box. The edge on this, I, usually I want to monkey with the edges. I want to you know, hone them a little bit or whatever. Not this thing. No, it was, this thing is perfectly freaking sharp, right out of the box, zero complaints, zero complaints. It was freaking phenomenal. I was kind of, I was really blown away by this knife. I was kind of like expected to be a little lukewarm about it and not like it so much. So let's go over some of the specs here. So I've got my piece of paper. Oh, and it says, it says, an explosive new design. Explosive. See, there's some there's some clever wordplay going on here. Bound to take the battlefield by storm. The 9070 SBK Claymore is a slender push-button powerhouse, packed full of hidden features, and inspired by one of the most notorious directional minds. It was inspired. So basically, someone is at Benchmade was sitting in the bathroom looking at a I don't know a mine catalog and he's like hey you know what this mine right here gives me a great idea for a knife design I want to take this over to development that makes no freaking sense let's just say it it sounded like a cool name and that's what you use it wasn't, it wasn't inspired by anything get out of here come on all right but yeah it's Made in the USA. So your overall length on this is 8.60. Your closed length on this is 5 inches. Your blade length on this is 3.60. Blade thickness 0.114. Blade steel CPM D2. Blade finish cobalt black. Handle material, it says grivery. But it. Do I have one of my other? Uh, hmm. I'd have to go in the other room to get one of the non-auto bench maids. Like it's somewhere between like, it's almost like it's between some of the older material and the newer stuff. I just can't remember the name of it. It was on, it's on, it's the scale material that's on the new uh, bug outs and that uh, SOCP folder that I got. Whatever it is, I got no complaints. But it says Grivery. Pocket clip, yes. Right or left hand tip up. 
as it should be for this type of opener. All right, so weight is 3.5 ounces, made in the USA. So the price on these for an auto, Benchmade auto, it's, it's about 195, which I think is very fair for this. I looked at, there was another one that I had looked at before and I tried to buy before, but when I got in the cart, turned out someone had bought it just before me. And I can't remember what that name of that one is. And I almost went with that one. But when I looked at this one, I was like, hmm, you know what? This one just kind of looks cooler. I kind of like that handle better. And it costs less. So let's go with this one. Bottom line is, if you like autos, if, you, if you're able to carry autos, and if you're looking for something in the just under $200 range, as long as you're not going to sit here and complain about combo edges, yeah, this thing, two thumbs up from me. I really am happy with this purchase. I've been carrying it since I got it, like two days ago. So, yeah, give you a little look at that in case you haven't seen it. So that one, as far as like my favorites go, let's say this is up there with it. this one and if we want to go down into the budgets probably this one so there you go folks that is the Benchmade Claymore available at DLT I'll have links to this in the description box below and then also some links to those other brands at DLT if you want to check out one of them as well some of them they're gonna have some of them they won't but especially like with the Microtex there's a lot to choose from and I haven't got my hands on one of those heretics yet but I'm really want I don't remember what it's called but it's a it's a single action it's it's almost like a, a mini halo it's like half the price I'm like hmm I have to find a way to finagle one of those things so definitely check them out all right guys Chris and prepare my 101 thanks for watching be sure to click like share and subscribe I'll be back with another video here soon so see you then